guys, hey guys, set it down, Big House Sport. We are here for a brand new video in regards to the NRL season. I'm so keen, coming up in a couple of days' time now, and uh, gee whiz, I tell you what, it's uh, it's taken a while, but we're finally here, and uh, I'm damn well ready to go. But today, guys, I'm not here by myself, you know, we've been getting a heap of people on lately, and uh, other fellow NRL content creators, and we've got someone from Tripod today. Uh, how you going, Jacob? Yeah, well, thanks, mate. Uh, happy to be here. Always excited to talk NRL. Can't wait for the season kickoff. Yeah, exactly right, man. Like, I'm just, I'm just pumping, especially as a time. Titans fan, man, you know, like we've been, you know, shit ass for a long time now, and, uh, and to, to put it lightly, and uh, at least we're finally getting some positivity going, I guess. Oh, absolutely, and you should be excited with good reason, especially the way they ended the season with the recruits, but I'm sure we'll get to all that as we look at all 16 teams. Exactly right. So basically, the way this is going to go today, guys, is we're actually going to go through the big question. So there's one big question that pretty much every team has right now individually, and we're going to go through, we're going to do it rapid fire, three minutes per one. It might even end up being two parts so if this is part one then obviously come back and we'll be obviously doing part two as well um but yeah so we're going to be going through every single club all 16 and uh and smash them out in rapid fire so you ready mate let's do it canberra raiders now they obviously unfortunately they lost in the grand final the other year and uh you know a lot of people have been starting to say is their premiership window over would you agree it's so hard, isn't it? Like, it was a tied game. and Maybe they should have had six to go as well. With 10 <laughs> minutes to go, it won't go oh, Don't do it to him. Don't do it to him. final, and, and then it's over, and you didn't win, and it's so hard. Do you ever get back? And then we had a good team again last year, definitely had the belief, and then Hodgson went down. And even then, they still got all the way to the prelim and ran into a buzzsaw that was the Melbourne Storm. Mm. Now, this year, well, a couple of massive losses I'll start with that are just huge shoes to fill it. Nick Kotrick and the outside backs, we spoke about the dogs and how big of a pickup he is for them. But Johnny Bateman, I really feel is a guy you can't replace. He was such an X factor, just so classy with every touch. What I like about the Raiders is I would argue they've got more depth than anybody in the competition. I would say their top 30 has more, you know, first grade calibre players than anybody else. And I think that's going to serve them really well through the year to win a lot of games, competition for spots, cover for injuries. But is their top level as good as some of you, we haven't got the Penrose, but we've talked about the Storm, the Roosters, the Rabbitohs. I don't know. I suppose Jack White and Dally M, you can't argue with a guy like him. He can take over a game, depending on how Hodgson comes back from injuries, maybe how Williams goes in his second year. And does Chance improve again? Because he's, he burst onto the scene a couple of years ago. Does he continue to improve? If all those things happen and align. I won't say the window has closed. I have him sixth. And still, I actually draw the line between uh, beyond six. I would be really surprised if anyone won the premiership. But within mm. the top six, I think they all do have a chance. Therefore, window still slightly ajar. Yeah, look, I, I wouldn't completely disagree. I, I thought their window actually was closing last year. I thought last year was actually their chance. And look, I think that... Uh, I, I really did like Caesar when he was there, to be honest with you, man. Aiden Caesar, And um, obviously didn't work out with him, though. And uh, I think he's in England now, but... You know, look, I think with Canberra, they're, they're a very interesting team to read because they do have such quality players all the time. I don't usually see a, pr a really poor Raiders team, to be honest with you. And I, I think that no matter what, this team is always at least kind of there or thereabouts. Uh, but in the same sense, I don't know, like similar to Parramatta in the sense, but I think Parramatta's players, I can back in this year more than I can back in the Raiders to actually go and do it. And like I said, I have my doubts about Parramatta. So I think that tells kind of everything you need to know. I wouldn't say it's shut, no, because they do have the players, like I said. But I just think these other teams right now are better than them. And I guess if you want to say that means their window's shut, then yes. But they're not getting any younger, these guys. And, you know, Papali's not getting any younger and, and he's a real crucial part of this team um, overall. So... I don't know what to say about them, but I think they're still going to be quality, regardless. Shaggies, uh, what's going on with them? You know, they were a very good attacking team last year. Not much defense, though, but I don't really know how to read them. So what would you say is their, I guess, main goal in 2021? Because I don't know. <laughs> well, I would say is to keep the key playmakers on the park because uh, that, that's something that has really plagued them in past years. And even with a couple of games to go last year, losing Sean Johnson was just so brutal. You talked about how good... They were so dynamic in attack, but it was mm. on the back of him having such a great season last year. Can you replace that? I look at a guy like Matt Moylan. I think this is his last chance. He's been, had so many injuries that have hampered him throughout his career, but we know the talent of the guy. He could step in there, maybe play a role in, in the six. You've still got like a guy like Josh Dugan uh, and the outside backs as well. We don't need to talk much about injuries with him and, and guys mm. like Fafita. And then the other thing is, I guess, pressure on Josh Morris. 
sorry, Johnny Morris, coach Johnny, Johnny Morris, Morris there, yeah. who I think did a really great job last year, considering all the adversity to still get this team into the eight. But the counter argument can be made that they really kind of fell into the top eight. They never beat anybody else above them in the ladder. They didn't win more than half their games. And they didn't really stand much chance when they got there, albeit like they didn't have Sean Johnson. So I don't think they'll make the eight this year because I don't see the improvement. Obviously, he's coming off the Achilles. So he'll be back um, in the second half of the year. And you just don't know what level he can get to. Exactly right. But I do hope that other guys, and I mentioned Moylan, can fire and give this team a chance to be competitive. And I think they're, they're going to be a tough side on a weekly basis. I just think the Sharks without Sean Johnson, I can't... I, like, he obviously brought so much to their attack. There is, the assists was... I think he had the most assists in the competition last year. Right. And I yeah. think that uh, without him, they obviously lose a significant portion for the start of the season. And although the first five, eight rounds don't really necessarily matter too much, they still matter in the sense that you need to, you know, outlay a foundation. And without him there, I'm not too sure if the... By the time he gets back, the, you know, the attitude within the actual team is going to be enough to push them along to the finals compared to, you know, that rush of 7 through 13, like I said before, uh, of teams that are already, you know, they've set up their foundation to actually make that charge. I think the Sharks, you know, they're just, look, they're just, I I don't know how to read them, but I I think their main goal should just simply be to get more of a rounded game plan in the sense that, yes, it's all good to attack. And like we said with the Rabbitohs, you know, you can attack, 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 attack. But you still need to be able to defend in some capacity because I think the Sharks were averaging like 20 points or something. They were ridiculous. They were giving up 50 points some games. They were giving up 30 points some games. You just can't have that if you're a top eight team. So for me, I think the Sharks just need to become a lot more rounded in their game plan and not just simply focus on putting the ball over the, over the line because look, that's great, but it's not the only thing you need to win games. Amele, we are here for the Seagulls and they had a very depressing year last year. I tipped them to win the comp before the year and uh, yeah, well, that didn't work out. But, you know, obviously Turbo went down and guess what? He's going down again. So would you say no Turbo, no finals? I don't think you were crazy last year because I think I had him about fourth or fifth last year as well. So if you go back two years, they suffered a lot of injuries. They still made the finals. They lost that controversial game to the Bunnies where oh, Jake yeah. Trevojevic got the sin bin. They could have easily won that game and they were a depleted roster. So you expected quite a bit last year, but we saw it all fell apart when Tommy Turbo went down and it's now become a series of injuries that he's had through his mm. young career. And of course... The latest news is the hamstring tear in the preseason. I don't know if you heard, it, what is it at least going to be first month of the season? It's, He's yeah. not going to be there. And it's like, there's no guarantee that he, he returns in round five and then just goes gangbusters for the next 20 rounds. Like, And if, if I knew that he would do that, then I'm telling you Manly will be a top eight side. Again, I think on his day, he's as good as any player in the world. And I still think there's enough there in that squad to, to be, you know, be an above average team. But you just don't know when he's going to come back, what capacity. Like, do they even consider a positional change with him um, to reduce the, you know, the kick returns so he's not striding out as much to reduce the risk of re-injury and obviously playing it really safe with him and stuff. So that's enough uncertainty with me, along with the massive hole that Vanua Blake will leave in the forward pack. And I don't know if they've replaced that. So I don't have Manly making the eight to answer your question. No turbo, no chance. Yeah, look, I agree. I would have had them in the eight if, if Turbo was there uh, because I think they would have been able to, as I said before, lay the foundation and get some wins early on the trot and then just kind of move forward from that. I think that overall Manly have a good team on paper, but they did lose, you know, Adam Fenua Blake as well and that's a huge loss there. And look, Cherry Evans is, is great and all, uh, but in the same sense, he can't necessarily just pull this team for 25 rounds, 26 rounds to, to get you through to the finals and with, with all the competition right now. I think that, yeah, look, Turbo... As a fullback, you know, every elite team who can win the comp has an elite fullback. You know, every team right there has a really quality fullback. And, and with no Trevojevic, you know, they have to go to their back. Who is their fullback, actually, with no Turbo? I believe it's... Uh, they haven't announced it. You know, Dez keeps his cards close to his chest. But I believe it'll be Ruben Garrick in round one, okay. I guess. And he can, he can play. But as you say, it's a difference between being serviceable and being a superstar. And the other thing, just to piggyback what you said, the other super key important position is hooker in the modern game. And it's never been the same for this club since they lost Abby Coruscant. Exactly right. Yeah, I think they've got Cade Cust there now. And like, no, no, nothing on Cade, but he's not a specialized, he's not a specific hooker. Exactly. You know, so, you know, there's, there's definitely worries around that. But overall, look, I don't necessarily have Manling in the eight. 
right now. Um, they quit Premier wrong with the team list that they have. But the same stands right this second with no Djibovic. Yeah, no, no, no finals for me. Okay, the Warriors, the, uh, the New Zealanders. Unfortunately, they missed out in the finals last year. You could have made an argument that they might have made it if it was a full season. Uh, but this year, they have no home games still. And as we've seen with the Wellington Phoenix and the A League, they're not really winning too many games. So they haven't actually won a home game in Australia. So do you think much the same for the Warriors in the sense that no home games is a crucial blow for their season? Absolutely. And they were so admirable last year after the, 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 the teams returned from the COVID break and the way that they played and, and, you know, being away from their family and having some key players actually return to New Zealand. So, you know, they were, they were a limited squad with like lone players in there. And as you say, they weren't far away from the finals had there been another month left and they lost a couple of close games. Probably deservingly, you know, should have been there in the top eight. So then people would think maybe this year with a more complete squad, and we mentioned Fanua Blake just previously, he comes in and they get those guys back like Dave Fusatua and Ken Marmolo that returned early last year, all back. I have a big question mark over Nathan Brown, like whether he's going to be the right coach for the job in this team. My understanding is he wasn't even necessarily that thrilled to take up the position initially and turn it down. And then only after hearing that Tuvi wasn't going to take the job, thought, oh, I don't know if I'll get offered anything better. And then took it, which I want somebody to come up and take over this Warriors job that is super enthused to be there and, you know, has great belief in the, in the playing group that they can take them to the next level. But that's just my question mark for the Warriors on top of not being able to have any home advantage. That's why I think they actually could have a really tough year. And I have them in the bottom four. Bottom four is a big call. I wouldn't disagree with it. I think that people, I think if they had a home season this year, I think with two of us, Shaq leaving, they would obviously get enough for him. And obviously with, you know, a few signings here and there and, you know, a nice little young building team and the Warriors uh, were improving, I guess. But in the same sense, you can't really back anything off of last year. Last year was such a random year for everything uh, that you can't really kind of get a good read on going forward from what, the hell that was I guess so look I think the Warriors I don't see them making the top eight I think they they do probably have a team that could push for it but I don't see it this year because of the fact that you know I am an A-League fan I do watch the A-League and I do see the Wellington Phoenix and they had a very good team coming to this year a lot of they what came second last year and now they're last you know they're, they're last this year because they're getting a full season with no home games whatsoever so look it's going to be very t- difficult for the Warriors I think they're going to have a very similar situation where their team is good enough but it's just unfortunately not going to be able to get those home games in and they're just not going to get off to a good platform and unfortunately probably fall to the wayside. Cowboys, North Queensland, uh, what are they doing right now? They're a bit uh, they're a bit bland or are they building right now? What would you say? I think a bit of both. I think they will be a little bit bland this year and I think that they might be building to something but I don't know if it'll be immediate. And we just talked about the Warriors. Todd Payton did a fantastic job with that squad last year. Should they have given him a four-year deal, the Cowboys? We, didn't we see Anthony Seabold have one great season as a first-year head coach, get a four-year deal, and wasn't that club regretting that pretty, pretty severely within Definitely, 18 yeah. months? Not saying that Payton is the next Seabold because everything I hear is a great motivator of men. The other big question with the Cowboys for me is just those players that are on the big money. So Val Holmes, the million-dollar deal. Michael Morgan comes back from injury. Not Tamalolo. I've got no question marks that he's going to put the team on his back. It's more to the other forward pack step up around him. But in the back line, the talent's all there. That if Holmes, Morgan, Hamasa, ha, the Hammer. Hamasa, Tabu Wai, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, you know, Isan Masters, if they all click, this could be, and Drinkwater as well, could be an exciting team. In fact, last year, their attack wasn't their problem. It was defense. And maybe that medal can be instilled by Peyton. So there's a roadmap there. They're always usually hard to beat in Townsville. I just don't think they're going to put it, you know, everything's going to fall perfectly for them necessarily. And I don't think it's a forward pack that scares anybody, especially with Tal Malolo. They're saying they're going to actually limit his minutes this year a little yeah. bit. So don't burn him out. I think that's, that's the difference that will keep them outside the top eight. Yeah, I don't see them making a top eight. Uh, I, I don't necessarily see them, but well, I don't see them coming last. A lot of people are saying they're going to be around that last place. I don't see them there, but I, I don't think they're going to be competing with a lot of these, that seven to 13 team. I could probably, look, they could actually, but I, I don't see them being better than 
at least, you know, teams like the Knights or, or, or the Titans or, or those other teams around that area. So for me, I think that they are a bit bland. I think that Morgan's obviously a great player, but he was, he, he was a, well, he's a great player when he's with Thurston. He hasn't really done anything with the Cowboys since Thurston left. Uh, there's a bit of a lack of direction overall for me going forward. I guess this is, you know, with Peyton there now, they might be able to see a little bit d- different direction. Um, I think that, uh, look, it's, it's, they're, they're a difficult team to read as well, but overall, I'm not too excited about their future right now. But this will be the year that we're going to see a little bit more direction going forward, I guess. Penny Panthers, uh, you know, they, they made the grand final last year. They, they went on a huge run, you know, where they won buddy 100 games in a row, you know what I mean? So they, like, they, were, they just couldn't stop them. But can they do it again this year? People are, people are off them a little bit and saying that, you know, they might be able to be read a lot better. Would you say they can go one forward or do you think they'll go backwards? Yeah, it does seem like the Storm pulled their pants down in the grand final. And then, of course, it, uh, the you know hottest, hottest ticket in town is now the Rabbitohs. But I'm, I, you said before that you're still quite high on the Panthers' prospects. And I'm with you. I still think mm. the talent level of that team is as good as anybody in the competition. And because it's such a young squad, like why can't they improve a little bit further and take finals experience as well into this year? But... Will they, you know, win 17 in a row like last year or, or you know, run away with a minor premiership? I'm not sure about that because I think what happened in the first half of the year last year was they ambushed some sides. They stuck up on some teams. You've got to remember they weren't really that heralded. They really did surprise some people with their play last year. And then by the second half of the year, they were playing outstanding and just nobody could get in front of them. Like they just, they just steamrolled, but it was kind of riding a wave of enthusiasm and the vibe in that club. And they were, yeah, they were really flexing on everybody. And now I think everybody remembers getting their ass kicked by Penrith last year. <laughs> and they're going to be ready for it when they play them this year. And I just wonder if that young squad going through another preseason, it's going to just be bang up for it straight away. So I think they could have some more flat spots through the year. Come finals time, I, I'm predicting a finals re- a grand final rematch. Panthers meet the Storm again. And this time the Panthers win the comp. Gee whiz. All right. I love it. I, I, I'll back it in, to be completely honest with you, man. I just think that it's so ridiculous to say... Like, look, I understand why people are saying, like, people know what they're like now, so they're not... Because I had them, like, ninth last year. I didn't even have them back in the eight before the season started. Uh, and then, obviously, you know, they blew me well out of the water straight away. I think a lot of people had them in a similar spot, to be completely honest with you, but some in the eight, some not. But this year, obviously, yes, we do know what to make of them. We do know that they're a team that is just going to attack, 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 and has very good defense in the same sense as well. I think that they're... Look, I definitely probably have them around the grand final, if not in the grand final. And I wouldn't be surprised if they won it this year. Everyone keeps saying that they're just not going to be that good this year. It's going to be second year syndrome. But I don't think so. I think this team is building. And I think they're, they're I don't know if they've been, well, they, I guess if I'm thinking they could win a premiership, they've been built. But I still think there's so much more to come from them. And if they made the grand final when there's so much more to come from them, I think they're going to learn from the experience of getting, you know, their, their pants pulled down against the Storm in that grand final, who are, you know, the ultimate when it comes to experience of grand finals. And I think they're really going to learn from that. So with Cleary there, with, with Cottesdale there, with, uh, you know, I guess with Edwards in, in the back line and, you know, Jerome Luai, that's a really good spine there. That's really going to bring them further. And I, I just I just can't see them getting wiped out. So they're definitely one of my favorites, if not, I guess, my favorite to, to win the comp. One of the teams who are looking like they probably will finish down the bottom of the table, it is the St. George Illawarra Dragons. Do they have a soul at the moment, man? I don't really know kind of what their emphasis is right now, and I don't really know... Uh, there, there's no real feeling around the Dragons, I guess, at the moment. I don't think they do have a soul. I think it's pretty heartbreaking. Uh, they should... Like, to lose Frizzell says a lot that he wanted to leave that club, and now... McGuinness, who was already signed, but would have been exiting at the end of the season to do his ACL in the preseason. He won't take any part. And he was the heart and soul of this club. So, mm-hmm. you know, that right there is losing two origin calibre forwards from this team. And when they used to play well, it used to be on the back of a dominant forward pack. Yeah, you still got, I guess, Paul Vaughan there and Tarek Sims, but it thins it out. The back line for me is still question marks. I've questioned a couple of, you know, head coach additions. I'm not a big fan of uh, Anthony Griffin. He can certainly prove me (laughs) wrong. But to me, the two clubs he's previously coached, Brisbane a few years ago and then more recently Penrith, they were stronger rosters. And people will say, well, he won more games than he lost. But he didn't get those teams where they needed to be, which is kind of why he ultimately was, was exited from those places. Now he comes back to a total rebuild, whether he wants to admit it or not. Is there promise in the future? Like they talk about having young, a good you know, crop of um, next generation stars, but not, it's not necessarily the guys that I see impacting the NRL this year, maybe in years to come. 
there is going to be a new generation. But for now, it's still like, what's Ben Hunt offer? What's Corey Norman offer? It's, it's a typical thing of these clubs that are struggling where guys are on huge money, but they're not the superstars of the NRL. Then you've really got to fill a lot of holes around them. I think they're going to have a really tough year. In fact, I've predicted them for the wooden spoon. Yeah, look, it's not surprising at all, to be honest with you. And I just think that McCulloch's not exactly the most exciting hooker either, to be honest with you. I think that he's... Look, he gets his job done, I guess, but in the same sense, uh, it's, it's, it's someone to get you by uh, until the next big thing comes along. I do hate it when... You know, people um, are back in, you know, well, I don't hate it, but in the same sense, I get over it when there's always, oh, yeah, we've got a great group of young guns coming through because everyone does. You know, every single team has, they believe that their young guns are coming through and they're going to be good. You know, look at it. Literally every team will tell you this and they're like, oh, don't buddy, you know, a couple of years away, we're, we're coming. So it's all well and good for the Dragons to have that great young up and comers, but it's, it's actually about having better up and comers than the other teams that have great up and comers. So look, there's no real emphasis or feeling around the Dragons right now. I, I don't know if I have them last, but I probably have them last, to be honest with you. I, I don't think there's a worse team than them. And uh, yeah, going forward, I think it's a, it's, it's a bit rough, especially with Griffin, like he said as well. You know, he's not really succeeded anywhere else, in my personal opinion. And <laughs> the team is just in an absolute rabble. And they are in the ultimate rebuild mode. And they understand that. Finally, we have the West Tigers. What do we think about them, man? Everyone's kind of tipping them around. A very similar spot to the Dragons, I guess. But are they as bad as believed? No, I don't think they're as bad as believed. And you might think I'm taking the piss here. But I'm going to predict they're going to finish ninth in 2021. <laughs> I love it, actually, I love it. That is better than what most people think. Because most yeah. people don't actually think they should be quite near the eight. I actually think it's quite a, a sneakily solid roster. I think improving the front row, getting Offangawi and Tarmau into that pack, that was always a pretty honest pack. And I also think while people look at the gains and losses and see a loss of Benji Marshall and then think, well, the team is going to be a little bit worse. I think that gives ownership to Luke Brooks. I know he's got his fair share of critics. I think well, <laughs> the, the Tigers have got the longest uh, finals drought of any club. And I think Luke Brooks has been there for every single one of those years. And you look at how many players this club has lost. Yeah, it's crazy. gone on to achieve great things. So that's got to leave a foul taste in the mouth. But maybe they've made some sneaky good signings this year. To me, I look at Dane Laurie at fullback. I think he's really exciting. And I think in a few weeks, we may be talking about him as one of the best pickups of the season. Even the positional shift, Dewey, to 5'8", I think could work really well. Let's see how Jacob Little goes. Because they lose Harry Grant at hooker <laughs> again, which really hurts. But the other thing that maybe they've got going for him earlier in the year is you know they'll be rock hard fit under Madge. So that counts for something in the new style of play where... You know, do they get worn out towards the end of the year? I'm not saying they're going to make the finals or um or make any noise, but I think they will be knocking on the door. And it, honestly, is that going to be even worse for the Tigers uh, in terms of a kick in the teeth if they do come ninth again? No, I guess last year they kept saying that they didn't want to come ninth and they were happy when, you know, the Titans came ninth, I guess. But look, for me, I'm going to ask you a question. Where do you think the Tigers would have come without Harry Grant last year? Well, they came 11th, I believe, last year, and Harry Grant was superb. So he had probably, I wouldn't say, 14th or 15th if he wasn't there. Yeah, I think they would have finished above the Broncos, but I can't see a great deal about, of teams that they would have finished above, to be honest with you. Uh, I think that, look, this team is it's okay. They've got some plays here and there. But overall, I don't, look, I don't think they're making the A, and I wouldn't put them up high up as ninth, but I wouldn't put them last. But I do see that drop-off from someone as enigmatic and, and fast and, and, and speedy as Harry Grant and, and just someone who's so creative that obviously went to play Origin at such a young age. And um, I think that's just such a huge loss and, and, and loss and such an impactful loss that this team might not have the same direction. You know, Obviously, they do have Brooks there, but... You know, he's not really done anything direction-wise for the last 10 years. And uh, I, I do get what you're saying in the sense... That I, I think their back line is... It's, well, look, it's, it's, it's okay. I, don't, I, don't, I think they're actually the definition of okay. I guess ninth is a good, reasonable option, but I'd probably put them around where I said the Broncos would be, around that 12, 13, 14 area. There you go. Well, we buddy smashed that, mate. We absolutely... Uh, we piled through those. So, uh, no, I think we did a pretty good job. I think uh, I think we answered those pretty 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 well. What do you think? Yeah, I think so, mate. I thought they were really good, poignant questions uh, that sets the table beautifully. 
as we turn our attention fully to the actual footy season kicking off. Exactly right. Well, uh, I'm definitely keen for it. But where can everyone find you, man? So just search Tripod with a Y. We've got a Facebook group uh, and we're on Facebook and Instagram and, um, and, and YouTube as well. And, and previewing the games with a different perspective, more a punting perspective if people are interested in that. Appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, obviously, everyone, go and subscribe to that YouTube channel and, and, and obviously check them out because they do some really good stuff there. And, uh, you know, obviously, I can't do anybody previews really because I'm always blogging. So obviously, jump over there and, and, and they'll help you out with that one. But obviously, guys, like I said, the season's coming very soon and I will be getting d- down to the game day experience vlogs. I'll be going to as many as I possibly can in the weekend. So go and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit little ding a ling a ling notification bell so you get a notification every time we upload. If I'm not at the game, obviously, I will be streaming as well. So, you know, we can uh, sit back and, and have a bit of a chat and have a bit of a laugh at probably, you know, the Broncos. No, they'll be all right this year. But uh, look, it's, it, it'll be very interesting. But we appreciate you guys as always. Smack that thumbs up button and I'll see you guys next time. Alrighty, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. See ya.